Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM for the final instalment of Lemons. And for this, we've decided that we needed someone professional, somebody with a very high opinion of vehicles, somebody who knew exactly what they were talking about. Someone very unbiased. And when they weren't available, we got this guy. So as you can see, all of us made it up to the north to the Yorkshire Dales and well, most of us got back. Well, 75% of us. Which is, well, pretty good innings, all things considered. Some of you may notice the rather obvious lack of a Trev and a blue Suzuki. He's and not parked behind the hedge, is he? No, no, he's not. Those of you who came with us and joined us for the big lemons meet will know that Trev, when going off for the photo challenge, never returned. And this is somewhat due to his legendary inability to navigate. And as you might be able to tell, the weather has somewhat changed, as have the seasons. Mm -hmm. Lemons finished a long time ago, and we don't know where he is. And we started getting concerned, so we reached out to people. And the best we can find is, somebody saw a battered Suzuki Swift getting onto a ferry with a very angry and confused looking driver heading to the continent. So, as far as I'm aware, it means that this can't possibly have lost, because that's not here. This did not come last out of the cars. I mean, I still think it might have come last. Now, no, this is a wonderful, fine automobile, but we'll never make up a good decision. So it's on to the judge. Now, I actually have quite a bit of experience with these things, and I've actually done quite a few miles in the Rialto, and using my extensive experience, I can tell you that this is not a fine example. So, Laurie, talk me through some of its many quirks. I want to say that part of your stories of adventures in them is part of the reason I got this. So this being here is actually partly your fault. Yes. Do you feel proud? Yes. I've listened to you. You, remem you remembered the fun bit of the story, and you forgot the bit of the story where I said, that was lovely, unfortunately, you can't get a good one for £500 mm. anymore, mm. so I never bothered ever doing it again. Yes. You have proven my point. I think so. Well, it, it made it. That's the main thing to take from this. So, um, most important things is two-colour bonnet. Red ones go faster, so this is a faster segment. If you look on the doors as well, this one, this side, has a completely different registration to the car, so that's not the right door for it. Excellent. Yep. Or at least the glass isn't right for it. At some point, it's apparently been picked up and thrown and landed face first. <laughs> of course it has. <laughs> because of course it has. the whole front end, it's definitely gone over. That door has got a massive crack in it where it's fallen over. Yeah, I can see that. That front yeah. side has definitely got damage, and this front, I think they drove this bit into a wall. Uh huh. Um, talking to my friend who has Reliance, it turns out that uh, this repair job all over it is actually not very good as well, so I need to redo that. Mm. Um, so, uh, B Reg, what year is that? It's 84. Ah, so not tax or MOT exempt yet? No, no, no. no. But soon! Soon! Okay. Um, soon! Where did the interior go? That's like what it actually. Oh, no. Where's the, the carpet? Uh, the, car <laughs> the carpet was removed so I can get to the access hatches and it's been such a good runner that I've neglected to... I haven't put it back yet, mainly because I keep needing to take the access panels uh -huh. off. So it has it? Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's very damp gone. in the back, which turns out the, the boot doesn't seal particularly well. Ah, oh, right, yeah, that's standard. Yeah. Um, uh, top speed achieved? I can't tell you. Okay. Does I, the speedo I can, work? The speedo works, and I can tell you that the yellow top engine, the high compression engine in this, is good for 80 miles an hour. And I can confirm Yes. Okay, so handling is good, I take it? Handling is superb. Um, okay. It corners one way a lot better than the other. Ah, show me the uh, engine you told me I was doing concours judging, so oh, I yes. should probably look at the engine. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's uh, an engine. That's the main thing to take from this. Is once I've got my... Notice how well the key goes in the lock there. Mm. How many different keys do you have for this car? Only two. Just two. Just two. Just One, two. because the original bonnet, these do fall apart because, as you notice, no struts or anything to keep it up and uh, non-standard mounting. Uh, the oh, engine, yes. in case you don't know, is all the way back there. Yes, uh, unfortunately, I do know. Um, yeah, okay. It looks like Doc Ock in here, doesn't it, really? <laughs> it does. But it does work, and the heater box here does indeed deliver 
hot air. And after no more than half an hour of driving, the screen will be clear. Well, that's pretty good, to be fair. That's better than some of the... Uh, was the fan on the engine also meant to be yellow, or is that a, an aftermarket enhancement? I believe it's meant to be yellow to warn you to keep your fingers out of it. Well, that's a yeah, good warning. It's also a three-bladed fan. Yes, I can see that. For weight saving, because... <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know why. Proper fuse. But this is a wonderful machine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And was it within budget? No. Okay. Was it, it was almost within budget? I paid £100 more than the budget to buy it. Yeah, I told him you can't get these within the budget that he had anymore. So this is shame on you, sir. This is your competition. You're supposed to lead by example. We'll call you Boris. Part of the reason that I wanted this, part of the reason was because I knew that a certain gentleman standing over there behind the camera would hate it. And oh, I was pretty good reason. And I was not there. mistaken. Mm. I'd actually also, having driven with a, a good version, I really love it. They're not as bad as you think, as, you, as you've driven, you can go, they're not as bad as everybody says they are. They're not stellar motors, but everybody's got this kind of reputation and thought that they're awful, and they're not that bad. Uh -huh. And your favorite feature of this car? My favourite single feature isn't actually the car itself, it's the look of everybody else. When I was driving around locally, because this is, has been my daily, I saw this kid who was running up the street, stopped and went... as it went past, and that made my day. It's just people look at it and they're like, why is that? And you're sat in traffic. And as you've noticed, it's a bit soft, so if you're sat at traffic lights, you can just wiggle it and it just shakes excitedly, waiting to go. And people are like, sat next door to you being like, so that's my favourite thing, it's just the people's attitude to it. I swear I can hear fluid swishing about. Your doors are like... I think I could get in your car don't without opening the don't, door. Don't wiggle that door, that door's had significant repairs. Yes. They're not good repairs, they are significant though. <laughs> it's... Hmm. Yeah, it's... I've done a lot of work on this. I bought this with the kind of... The understanding was the engine had been done. That was the main reason for buying it and going over, because it had a, re, a recently rebuilt no miles on it engine. Was that true? To all intents and purposes, yes, I think so. So the engine's good? The engine's good. She runs nice. It does what it's meant to do. When it's running, it sounds sweet. It was just everything else that the guy had not done. And I did not realise quite the extent of everything. When I got this, James, none of the electrics worked. Mm -hmm. The brakes did not function. Mm -hmm. None of the interior was actually properly in it. Yeah. And um, it turns out as well, the, the gearbox wasn't actually mounted either. So you went over budget and bought poorly. Yes. Excellent. Right, let's have a look at this, shall we? Welcome, JM, to the worst car I've ever owned. Mm. Bigging it up already, which is always a promising start. Um, it's got foliage on it. Yeah, it's um, got moss on the outside. There was mould on it in the inside this morning. The, as, as you can see, there's some water on the side, on the side windows. That's mm -hmm. inside the vehicle. It was also on the front screen. That's true, yeah. And on the rear screen, inside the vehicle. Um, so it's not very well sealed, for one thing. So that's another bad point about the car. Doesn't like cold starting either, even though I've placed a sensor on it. That should have fixed the problem. Yeah. I do understand that you did not actually purchase this car. No, this was purchased for me. Okay. Was it purchased within budget? Yes. It was. Well within budget, or was it the budget? Uh, £400, I believe, they oh, So money to spare. Money to spare? Okay. Now, I mean, to be fair, it actually looks like a pretty decent car. Like, in terms of the condition of it, it's actually not that bad. You yeah, the body the panels front. look fine. Yeah, the, the rest It's the rest good. of it that's the problem. Yeah, there's a bit of corrosion, I've noticed, on the fuel filler flap. Yeah, that's um, that's very common for these cars. I like because the they're uh, badly made. 106 rally style uh, white wheels. So, thank you. Uh, I decided to call it the, the rally car. I was like really getting into the, the spirit of the challenge and the yeah. vehicle and then it's just sort of let me down. Now you've more said to more. me that you don't like the car but are there any things about it you do like? Um, I like that it has four wheels compared to his car. It does have more wheels and more gears. As well, you got fifth gear. Yes, um, that's about. Uh, it, uh, for me, it doesn't have any redeeming features at all. the The seating position is too high, so you feel like you're sitting on the car, not in the car. The steering wheel column doesn't move to a position that's comfortable. The steering wheel wobbles. It doesn't have any steering feel. You can't heel and toe in it. The gearbox feels horrible. 
Um, what else? I had to do a clutch change on this car and it's the worst car I've ever worked on, ever, because everything is just so vacuum packed in the engine bay. And I can compare a clutch job to a 106 is so much easier. And to, this took about four times the amount of time. For example, the starter motor, you have, it's the same size bolt, but you have to use a three different types of spanners to get to that bolt. You have to use the small one just to get there. And then it's like, oh no, now that's in the way. So you've got to get a little bit deeper socket. And then it's like, oh no, this last one is a long extension with the big handle. And it's like, who designed this car? It's awful. I hate it. <laughs> Was it good on fuel? Not particularly, no. What engine is it? The 1.3, I think. Okay, four cylinders? Yes. Yeah, 75 horsepower. But on the trip, I couldn't use all that power because it had a, the clutch was gone. So I could, um, for example, on the drive home was the worst drive I've ever had to drive in a car. I had to drive five hours in the dark. It was yellow uh, weather warning for uh, wind and rain. It was pitch black and I could use 5% throttle the whole way. And to make sure that I made it, I basically had my foot locked on the pedal for 5% the whole time. And I had to have the radio turned down so I could listen for the clutch slip. And I figured as long as I didn't make the clutch slip anymore, I will make it. And if I go slower than a lorry, I will have to call the AA. Now that, and then luckily I me, just made it. That does sound like the spirit of a cheap car challenge. That sounds like that's exactly what you should be doing it was hateful. on these kind of events. This, to be honest, this is this is far too clean. The thing about this car is that actually, of the three cars here, I would say that this is the one which has been a cheat on budget. But actually, as far as I'm aware, this is the only one that wasn't a cheat in terms of the initial purchase, at least. And actually, it's probably cost less to put right than the other two as well. So I've had to do, do quite a few. I had to, I had to buy new window wipers because they were dangerous. I had to buy yeah. a new battery. I had to buy yeah. a new clutch, I had to buy a new sensor. Yeah. Um, How much was the clutch? The clutch was £50. Uh, the battery and the window wipers were £100. And the sensor was an extra 20 quid, I think. Yeah, I wish clutches on my cars were 50 quid. Okay, I quite like this. But let's have a look at the Daisy. All right, so I know about the Starlet only a little bit. But yeah. that's in relation to the Glanza. Well, this is a Glanzer, so or this is it a Glanzer. looks like one. It looks like one, okay. So what's the differences between this and that? Well, this is actually a standard UK granny spec starlet. It has been modified quite a lot. Does it have any turbos? No, well, it, I do actually have two turbos. Are they attached to the no, car? <laughs> they are, they're currently sat in the shed. I have all the parts to turn this into a turbocharged proper Glanzer V, uh, but it's currently in Glanzer S spec. But uh -huh. with a Glanzer V bonnet. 1.3? 1.3, yep, four okay. cylinder. Power? Making about 100 horsepower because it has the intake Ooh. manifold and ECU off a Corolla on it. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. What should it make as standard? About 80. Okay, so more or less level with the KA. Yeah. But what age is this? This is actually a 96. Oh, so we've got, you know, over two decades. Two decades of, of Lemons of vehicles. Cars yeah. here, that's pretty impressive. Okay, I haven't, I haven't even genuinely looked, looked inside, inside this There's one. A yeah. it, there There's a lot of trash inside of it. There is a lot of trash inside it. Yes. Um, yeah, I see you've gone for the sort of a uh, new GR Yaris GRMN inspired rear interior with nothing. No seats. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, there, there is a strut brace. Yeah, the I can top see there. the strut, strut brace. Strut brace front and rear. Yeah, for kids to hold on to. Yeah. Um, you, the, you just ratchet strap them to it. The paint, I know base. you've had some issues with it, but actually from like three feet away, it actually looks presentable. All right, I mean, yeah. in the context of 500 pound car. Other lemons. Yes. And exactly. this is actually lemon colored too. Now, yeah. was this the original color? No, so originally it was actually a very nice dark green, very much like Morgan's BMW, but mm -hmm. uh, this is actually Honda Phoenix yellow, which is off the Integra DC5. Oh, yeah, I, I quite like it. So but this is a UK spec car, you say? UK spec uh, car. Did you put the bonnet on it? No, so it came with the Glanza bumper, the Glanza rear and the Glanza bonnet mm -hmm. and the sunstripes and the tint and everything. And it was all just different colours when I got it. So oh. it did have to be painted. And to what extent did you entirely ignore the regulations in your own competition? Well, you see, this was actually a running driving car for lemons for £500 because it came with the clutch it needed and I did the clutch job. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, because everyone else has bought so many cars and none of them were working, yes. and because COVID had happened, well, this kind of became my daily driver. 
So oh. instead of having it in several different colours, I started tweaking it and modifying it. I got some new wheels, I got it painted, I got the headlights done, and yes, it started costing a lot of money. But you made the ultimate mistake, you fell for it. What did I fell for? No, I mean, you fell for the car. I did, I did fall for the car, yes. No, this, this car is not going anywhere unless it catastrophically dies. It's well, I'm sure it's not going fine. anywhere anytime it's soon. It's fine. Um, so, how much work had to be done to prep it for the trip? For the trip, it was only doing the clutch on it, um, okay. which was a bit of a pain, and it's not been done quite right, but it's, it's more than functional. In terms of the universally acknowledged Ford KA scale of yep. a pain in the backside, how much of a pain in the backside is a clutch on one of these? About the same as a 106, I'd say. It wasn't that difficult, So it's really. like 0.5 on the KA scale? Yeah, exactly. Because I have it on good authority, that's twice as difficult, at least, as a 106. Yeah. Okay, so 0.5 KA is on the international clutch change scale, <laughs> and how much was your clutch? Uh, the clutch was free, it came with the car. It was an uprated clutch and it came with the car. Excellent. So it's <laughs> race. It, it, was, it was a five hundred pound car running. Five hundred pound car with the spare bits. Yep. Which you fitted? Yep. So that so you prepped the car for the journey within the budget. Yep. And it had Michelin Pilot Sport threes on it as well. So. Excellent. Does it still? Yep, still does. Fantastic. And what's your favourite bit about the car? <sighs> it's one of those cars where you can drive it slow and it still feels like you're going fast and it's just it's is just that enjoyable <laughs> to drive? Now that can either be you drive it slow and you feel like you're going fast because it's a death trap, mm. or it's still special. It's still special. It's, it's, still it's special. a really fun car to drive. It, it just handles lovely and it's, it just puts a smile on my face. Okay. Um, I have to wear noise cancelling headphones in it though, <laughs> because <laughs> the head unit didn't work, so I replaced it with. Well, no, it didn't have a head unit, and uh -huh. I decided to take a gamble on the £20 AliExpress head unit. Oh, yeah. Um, it, that worked fine yep. for about 30 minutes, and then that stopped working completely. And uh, there's quite a lot of rattles in it. There's a lot of trim which isn't really fixed to the car inside. So noise-cancelling headphones are they are required in this car. I also changed the seats as well. It's yeah. got uh, Celica seats in it. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Actually, to be fair, you know, I saw a video with a bloke with a McLaren F1, and he had to wear noise cancelling headphones as well, which I assume is where you. Oh yeah, because it's race from. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've been told that because I am the judge and I am the law, I am kind of allowed to set my own criteria for who is actually the victor. Uh, and we've got three cars currently present. There is one missing, as we already know. And I asked whether I was supposed to choose my favourite car or the best car, because they're rarely actually the same thing. I was told, unhelpfully, that I could actually choose both. So, my personal decision about the LMM fleet for, is it 20, 2021 LMM, yep. isn't it? 2021 LMM, the JM's personal favourite car, I'll reveal in a minute. But I'll tell you the best car, and you can make your mind up as to which one actually, therefore, wins lemons but the the best car here in terms of actually being a cheap car has to be the ka because in spite of its owner's protestations it's actually not that bad a car you can heel and toe in it it does have many flaws it's not exactly a low slung sports car but it does do the job and it also happened to come in under budget which is relatively novel yes it required preparation however my favourite car, and if I were to choose a winner, which I think is why I've been dragged out of bed on a Saturday morning, has to be that. Um, because it's the only one that its owner actually seems to have an attachment to that doesn't seem to be a fool's errand. Uh, this one is almost certainly going to be what we bury Lorry in, only for the reason that we will not be able to actually sort of separate the Rialto from his remains. Uh, that, I think, if uh, if Morgan could, he would simply set fire to it now. Whereas this, this is owned by a man who really, truly loves it. He wants it, and he managed to get it within budget, do some stuff, enjoy it. It is clearly a work in progress, but that is the spirit of Lemons. And to me, for that reason alone, this has to be the winner. So even though we are actually all going to vote on our cars, it's plainly obvious at this mo moment that the Starlet won. I only feel that this is a fix. A fix? I mean, it's it's the only original Lemons car. It kind of deserves it, I feel. Yeah, to be fair, uh, it does. On that note, though, mm -hmm. how good actually is it? Well, 
I want to go on everyone else's first because at the end of Lemons, obviously when we went to Sky last time, it came back and let's say none of the cars really survived well. I mean, all of them needed some surgery. Mm. So Morgan, the KA, as you said, said in the judging section there, it needed its clutch done, didn't it? Yes. And the Suzuki, as far as we can tell, its wheel bearing had gone again it, on the trip. Yes, it definitely had. Maybe suspension. That All the suspension needed redoing. And All of it. the small hole in the driver foot well. Yes. You could see the road. Yeah. And the Reliant well... Just talk us through some of the issues you think you're going to have to tackle coming up. On the way home, I have acquired a new fuel gauge, so I can actually work out how much fuel it's got rather than counting the miles. Do you not work out the fuel level by smelling it currently? No, nope, no, nope, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. It's not smelling very heavily of petrol at all. Um, I've got to fit that. I've got the... On the way home, I did get the economy gauge to work on this, and I can tell you that the economy on this is poor. Yeah. Um, as you notice, it's a bit like that, and when I sit in it, it goes like that, so I need to... Suspensions probably do something. Uh, do you know what I'm doing on this? I've talked to... This is a genuine fix, talking to the right guys. You take the spring off that side, the single leaf spring, which is where the driver sits, which gets the most work, and you place it on this side, and you take... It's, you like, it's like you rotate tyres, isn't yeah, you it? you just turn them around. And so what? I'll go to swap the springs over and swap them over. I've got a new set of dampers to go on it because one of them has started leaking. How much was they? Uh, money. We're not judging lemons by price anymore because we've decided that none of us can obey a budget. <laughs> no, it's, it's bad. Um, also, the clutch started when I was shifting down on lemons shuddering uh, and it's now quite bad and is sometimes stiff to go into gear. So I think I need to do the clutch on it. Um, I've still got to put a couple of switches into it to make the switches work. It's dribbling on the inside in fact the rear footwell has got water in it and i don't know where it's coming from i think that was just factory standard wasn't it to be fair they, it doesn't seal well to start yeah. off with um i um, think that's a lot of issues oh and also i need to grease up i've got to remove all the old grease nipples on the prop shaft from the front wheel and replace them with new grease nipples and actually put some grease in it because it is a crucially important that you do that and you don't allow it to uh, run Go dry, dry otherwise it will cost more than I spent on the car to replace them by the way new set of springs more than I paid for the car lovely and, and of course then you've what? got the interior to fix oh, and the, the exterior to fix yes, as well yes it will need painting as well that's the other big yeah. thing I need to do on it it needs a bit more than painting mate oh and the other thing is it's eating oil that's the other big thing that I've realised it's drinking oil oh it's like my Beamer then uh, yes so uh, I need to work out why it's drinking oil and it does smell quite petrolly at the moment so <laughs> I've got to work out so why everything Every major system everything on the that car, you haven't done. Brakes, oh no! I also want to check the gearbox oil and change that, and the diff oil and change that. I've run out of components on my car. Good. Oh, well, and I need to fill up the windscreen washer because I've run out of windscreen washer stuff. Because I have been using this as my daily. And right. this, I want to start on this because I was expecting to come here and say it's all good. Oh. <laughs> this is actually me, this is oh, me revealing to oh. these two right now. What's wrong with it? So before I went on the big trip up to the north, I was like, ah, we'll do a major service on it, change the oil and everything. And before we left on the trip, I checked the oil because I was yeah. like, that's what you do for a major trip. It was, it was, it was very low on the gauge. I was like, okay, G gave it a litre. When we got back from the north, I checked the oil again. Oh, it's, oh, low. No. it's low again. <laughs> oh, no. Give it another litre. <laughs> I've just driven back to my parents over the other side of the country and to the airport and other places and um, yeah, it's used another litre. Oh no! So how many miles are we talking per in between litres? A couple of hundred, maybe three, four hundred. Oh no! <laughs> three hundred miles? Yeah. Is it a litre of oil? Oh no! I think the rings have gone on one of the cylinders. So you need a compression test. I do need to. That's that is my that is my job for this afternoon is compression test it. I might do it on this section at the same time if we got the compression tester out because I want to know where this is using its oil. So in true LMM fashion, none broken. of the cars survived. Well, actually, no, they survived and they're still driving. None of it is perfect. Seventy-five percent of them are still driving. Well, the KA well, we works. don't know, do we? <laughs> it may still be trundling across the continent thinking, I don't understand any of this, I must be in Wales. They've started speaking Russian now. I'm, <laughs> I'm told the KA is a perfectly working vehicle. The KA's not bad. Like, our, our judge has come back and all the things Morgan has said about his KA has just gone, it's fine. 
So it's what, not fine. What we found with the, with the KA is the KA is not bad. It's just more. It's just the driver <laughs> just doesn't agree with it. And on that bombshell, it's awful. thank you very much for watching Lemons. And Lemons will be back this year for the next episode. Hopefully We're, with a less restrictive budget. Yeah, we've got new plans for it. So uh, and we'd, there'll be an update at some point in the, kind of the near future where we will be doing a meetup again for you guys to come and join in with us. So thank you for that. Thanks for joining us. And let's all celebrate the true victor here. You, hang on. You haven't asked me which one's my favourite. Oh yeah, we were going to do that, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we were supposed to vote. Okay, Morgan, which of these fine cars is your favourite? And you can't vote for your own. Yeah, exactly. I can't vote for my he own. He wouldn't vote for his own anyway. No, no. exactly. You know, all know how much I hate mine. I can't... Do you hate it more than this? No. Okay, well, we know where this way is going then, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely not. And I can't pick Trev because he's not made it back, unfortunately. He may still be going. Your car, I mean, a bus pass is better than your car. <sighs> So then, by oh. just by just by default, I it's, just want to, it's, I want to point out this is process a man of elimination that who is, refers to a bus as a peasant wagon. <laughs> I've never said that in my life. So I'll go my vote, and it literally I would have been sat here for my vote, but um, I like that car. I did like that. Car. I, I did like it, and unfortunately, I've I've got to go with the Reliant. Good man. Because you like them. I hate KAs. And also, I think they are the ugliest car produced. I think it is uglier than the Reliant. It's impossible for anything <laughs> to be uglier than that. Well, maybe that particular this, Rialto is... Uh, but yeah. that's the one you're choosing, that particular one. They're just so... It's fun. It's so daft. It's, it's so fun. daft that it deserves to have at least some recognition. Yeah. I've, it's, some it's recognition. And clearly, yeah. when it comes to me, I love the Starlet. The Starlet is, without doubt, it is the only original Lemons car. Yeah. It has been Matt Daily now for 18 months? Yeah, coming on two years. Coming on two years, where apart from the a new thing where it started drinking oil, it's not actually let him down. He's no. actually gone above and beyond. He's painted it. It's gone beyond a Lemons car. It's actually it's, it's a proper for. car. Well, I can't believe though, is that he hasn't fixed any of the rattles and stuff. I've, I rode for his in his car for five minutes and I was like, you've been driving like this for 12 months. Well, I, want, I want to stress headphones. this. All you need. They are about equal for internal road noise. No, the Rialto is still worse. No, that is <laughs> so loud. I, you have to shout to your person next to you while you go first. Well. Not going 30 miles per hour. <laughs> yeah. So what we said is the clear winner then of this year's lemons is Matt in the Starlet. And having tallied all the points and all the opinions, second place is a tie between the K8 and the Reliant. Which is brilliant. I don't know how you work that out, but there we go. That's, that's, that's all tallied up. Joint runners up. Joint runners up. Well done. You're almost as good, as good as a Reliant. Joint losers. <laughs>